Yeah, yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm pretty much ready. I mean, okay, we'll, um, we'll see how this goes. All right, <laughs> let's see how this goes. Uh, hello, hello. Uh, thank you, everyone, for coming. Uh, this is going to be Puffin Forest Q and A. Uh, I'm Ben. I'm here, and with me today I have Dingo. From, hello. From Dingo Do- Doodle. She's from Dingo Doodles. Uh, she's going to be asking me the the questions. I I pulled the Twitter and Facebook and kind of asked them like, oh, hey, what kind of questions do you want me to answer? And I got a list, and we've been looking through them and picking out some of our favorites. And um, I'm going to be answering your questions now. And total disclaimer, if I can't pronounce your name, I'm very sorry. And I might just call you Bucket instead. <laughs> <'cause> I just... <laughs> no, I, I also, it's funny because it's like Twitter questions. It's like sometimes the Twitter names are like backwards or really weird. Or it's like, what the, you know, so we're going to try. <laughs> Yeah, we're going to try. And uh, also, if I don't read it properly, we'll, we'll figure it out. I'll, I'll, I'll do my best. I'll do my best. Yeah, thanks, Dingo, for being um, here. Uh, do you want to plug your <laughs> you, do you want to plug your channel? It's Dingo Doodles. And then you have. Yeah. It's, <laughs> yeah, my channel is uh, Dingo Doodles. I do some videos. Uh, I did one D&D video so far, and I'm hoping to do some more. So, mm. uh, plus, yeah, I'm just <laughs> Plus, you have the web lazy comic. Animator. You have Electric, or electric Bunny. Yeah, that's yeah, I have a webcomic uh, called Electric Bunny Comics. I've been doing it for like five years. So there's like 200 comics on there if you guys want to check it out. Uh, yeah. And, you know. All right. Awesome. Thanks for having me on. Yeah. Uh, thanks for being here. Because uh, that way, if I'm just talking to myself, that's kind of boring. Uh, <laughs> so anyway. <laughs> All right. All right. <laughs> so the first question that your fans must know yeah. is by Hagrid Ruby which is how were you introduced to tabletop games? Yeah, so my story is uh, the way I got into it was um, I had been watching online. There was a, the first time I'd heard about it was there was a creator called Noah Antweiler who did uh, Counter mm-hmm. Monkey. And he, he was one of like, he would produce uh, video reviews on mostly like video games and, and movies. And um, he started producing content on tabletop RPGs. And before I had seen his content, I didn't even know what a tabletop RPG was, but he would tell stories of his games, and those would be like an hour long or half an hour. I'm like, wow, these games seem really cool. Um, Mm -hmm. And then from that, um, one of my friends, after I'd been watching him for about a year or two years, one of my friends posted like reading these at work, and he had a picture of the D&D 4th Edition Player's Handbook and the Dungeon Master's Guide, and I was like, oh, I know that game. It's Dungeons and Dragons. And he said, like, oh, that's cool. Like, I'm starting to get a group together. Do you want to play? And I was like, yeah. And so that was how I got into my first group. How, how old were you? Oh, that was, that was a good uh, six uh, years ago or so. Um, so it was, uh, I think it was around, uh, or let me think. Uh, that was actually, it was, yeah, five years ago or so. So I was, I was about 21 at that time, 20. Um, oh, okay. Yeah. So, um yeah, that was that was when I uh, got cool. into it. Cool. All right. Next question. Uh, this question is from Just Call Me Meg. Uh, I almost slipped up on that one. Uh, question: uh, Would you ever upload some of your D and D games that you could record for YouTube? Okay. So, funny thing about that was that um, my group actually for a while has been toying with with different like uploading and stuff like that. And actually, even before I had gotten into YouTubing, the Star Wars group, I was part of a Star Wars group and they had tried recording it as part of a podcast. And it was, we struggled with it because it was like, the idea is like, oh, we'll just be playing a game and we'll put a microphone in the center and it'll just record <laughs> and everything will be fine. And then you learn really quickly, like, oh, uh, no one wants to watch that or it's it was, it was <laughs> really struggling um, and so um, so the th- then um, I think so I'm part of a group now in our group there's two guys there's Marcos Games and then there's um, uh, Eric who does Codfish and um, Marcos actually does record our games using this like 360 camera and then he posts them mm. up online and um, you can look I'll, I'll leave the link in the description that takes you over to his channel. Uh, the one thing I will say is it's like, it's very like, we just put them up. It's like, we just record us playing. Like the, it's not like I, the one thing I worry about is that I think people are like, Oh yeah, two hours of puff and forest playing a game. It's like, it's not that exciting. Like really, <laughs> it's not like a two hour video, you know? Um, 
So, I mean, you guys can go and check it out, but it's like some people don't even know which which person I am they're watching. It's like, oh, I think he's that guy in the corner that's like looking at his sheet, like, and the lighting's terrible. And um, anyway, it's just, but there there is there is another show I'm actually producing, which I hope to come out relatively soon. Um, and actually, by the time I post this Q&A, hopefully it'll be out, is I'm trying to produce a show called Disaster Squad. And what it is, is it's um, podcast form. We're all recording. We're using the microphones. And it's a superhero RPG. And it's going to take place in the setting of Sanctus, where it's like this future where there had been like a cataclysm. And uh, now there's only like one major metropolis. And um, the character's kind of running around a sci-fi setting. Uh, there's like these aberrations. I'm, I'm going to try and produce like some kind of a primer, like getting you up to speed on the setting and the characters and stuff like that. And um, yeah, yeah, yeah. But anyway, yeah, I'm cool. I'm producing that. Um, hopefully, by the time this Q and A comes out, um, I'll have the channel and all the artwork and everything set up. But yeah, I'm going to be I'm mm. I'm not going to be posting the long form content on the main channel because I just I worry it's like. Um, oh yeah, another another Puff and Forest video, and people coming like, oh, it's one of those hour long plays. Okay, and then like you know, so I worry about mixing content. Oh, I enjoy them. <laughs> oh, thanks, but it's you know, it's like I, I'd like uh, right now. I'm trying to keep the content separated so that way it's like yeah. if if people are coming for animations, it's a one stop thing. Right. Except for the Q and A, which I'm okay. going to be posting, which is another long form content. So I'm breaking my own rule, but. <laughs> 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 Gotta live on the edge. Uh, okay, so next question. Uh, Reclusy Medic asks, does your science background influence your DMing? You know, I've thought about this for like the longest time. Like the second this question came in, I'm like, huh. Uh, you know, and it's because I'm like, I think maybe like you might say like, oh, I'm analytical or I think about the numbers or I think about the mechanics maybe. Um, mm -hmm. Like that might... But also, I used to work as a biochemist, so I'm thinking, like, was there ever a time in a game where I used my biochemistry background <laughs> in the game? And I'm like, no, never, literally <laughs> never. That's never come up. You know, there was even one, the only time that might have come up was someone was, like, testing some samples in a river uh, to get, like... And you're like, oh, I know this stuff. <laughs> honestly, I was just like, okay, roll the dice. Okay, you made it. Anyway, here are the numbers. Like, I didn't even, I wasn't even, like, very particular about it, the... Um, Although the the only time, I, I guess so. Anyway, to actually answer the question, like maybe the fact that it's like I'm analytical, and I think more about like maybe the numbers or something, or I think about the mechanics mm -hmm. of the game, like maybe that might be an influence. But like I've never brought up like biochemist, you know, like the biochemist background in in the game. I've never been like, oh, you guys, technically speaking, you wouldn't be able to be here because. If you had eaten this kind of material, it wouldn't get you sick because blah, 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 blah. The, <laughs> there was only, so there's, I do have actually two stories from other backgrounds and stuff like that was, um, I've, I've worked on cars a little bit, like nothing professionally. It's just my dad had done some work on cars. And so whenever something was broken, <laughs> I had to help him out. And so I know a little bit about cars. And um, one time in the game, a car had broken down and, or it gotten stuck in a rut. And the players were like, none of the players had ever worked on a car before. So they're like, oh, yeah, we're going to put the car up onto the jack. Like, we're going to jack it up. And then what that means is that since it's up out of the dirt, you can easily move it around on the on the jack. So that way you can reposition it. I'm like, no, no, that's uh, not. Ha if, yeah. if, if that's happening, your jack is broken. Like, <laughs> Yeah. Like what? It's designed to be stable. So you can't easily move the car around by getting it off the ground. Like, it's actually harder to move that way. <laughs> Yeah. Um, and then there was another story that I had where um, I was running a game and I was running a sailing game. And I've never been on a boat. I never, I was just using the boat as a car. And freaking three of the people who were players were all in the Navy. It was because one of the guys in the Navy, he's like, oh, I'm going to ask my, you know, I'm in the Navy and I have two other people who I work with. Like, we're going to be in part of this game. I'm like, okay. But. It's so funny because they're using they're using like oh this is the starboard side or the port side and I'm like ah oh, that's the star port front side <laughs> and left or right <laughs> left damn or it right damn it and then <laughs> I, I was making this joke of like all right you guys have to stop the boat using your boat brakes so that. <laughs> <laughs> 
Ah, uh, yes, the, um, they must have enjoyed he, that. He had actually, he was trying to give me a lecture on like, okay, starboard is this side, port side's this side, and then he was talking about like how when you put the anchor down into the sea, it's the it's the chain that prevents the boat from moving. Um, the actual anchor doesn't hit anything. It's just the it's the friction of the chain that prevents the boat from getting um, like uh, what is it like carried away by the currents. Oh, okay. It's like thanks, Ted. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. All right, roll the dice. Damn it. <laughs> <laughs> you know, just using the boat as a car, I'm like, oh, we want to go to this port. I'm like, okay, you get in your boat, and suddenly you're at that port now. <laughs> Huzzah. They were asking me, like, how many knots are we going? Like, what size vessel is it? I'm like, the 50 feet? That's a size? Is a boat. <laughs> a boat. Ship. <laughs> is a no, boat, damn he, it. He was asking me, like, is it a ship or a boat or something like that? I was like, uh, there's a difference? <laughs> <laughs> and then it's like, wait, 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 don't tell me. Just just roll the damn dice. <laughs> All right. Uh, next question. This is from Rob, and this is a personal favorite of mine. This one. <laughs> it says, would you rather fight 100 duck-sized horses or one horse-sized duck? Ah, uh, this one. Um, so uh, probably I've been giving it a lot of thought. I would probably fight <laughs> the... Um, one horse sized duck because i mean just like the idea of just seeing that swarm would like terrify me um i think probably I'm on the same boat i think probably with a duck like the other thing is that a duck's bones are like kind of brittle um so like mm-hmm. maybe i could get it in a fight and then the other thing is like maybe i could like strangle it like just get on its back <laughs> and just strangle it or something. oh man uh <laughs> I, I, I do not totally condone any it. kind of animal violence, but in a situation yes. where I'm forced with it. <laughs> uh, that's a good one. I would personally tra- train it. <laughs> I'd, I'd, I'd ride that duck. I, I actually, I do have a D&D related story to that. Was um, <laughs> The thing is, I was playing in this game and um, I, was, I was had this scenario where there's a zoo and there's all these strange and alien creatures that this collector had captured, and they all got loose. And so they're all, like, murdering each other there in this greenhouse. And so, of mm-hmm. course, when I describe that, all the players are like, we're going to get pets. We're going to make them all our pets. Like, and I'm like, look, that's a freaking chimera. It's like a half lion, <laughs> half goat, half dragon. Like, we're going to make it our pet. Like, what do chimeras eat? Could we, like, ride it? <laughs> <laughs> Better have amazing handle animal. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Um, so the next question is by eight slash bear. What software do you use to animate? Okay. So I've kind of played around with like animation and kind of experimented with different stuff over the years. And I'm still at a point where I'm still experimenting. Like I'm actually coming up. I'm probably going to try using flash because it's like everyone mm. uses it and I really want to see if I can get good at it and see if it produces better like images. But anyway, um, right. originally when I first got into it, I used a program called Krita and I used um, HitFilm 4 Express, which is just, it's kind of a, it's a free software that's for video editing. And um, I use Krita, which is just a, a it's almost kind of like Photoshop. It's just image editing software. And I was using that for a while. And a big part of the reason why I was using it is I didn't have a drawing tablet. I would just draw things on a mouse and then save the bodies as templates. And then I would redraw the eyes and the arms. And um, that's why a lot of my older animation, I use a lot of ellipses. I use a lot of lines. I use a lot of rectangles is because those are easier to do with a mouse. Um, eventually, I got a uh, drawing tablet and so I switched to using um, Fire Alpaca because it has better support for the um, for the tablet. And I'm still using HitFilm. And uh, I've tried, I've experimented a bit with using um, Adobe Flash. Um, I think that's, I think it's called Adobe Animate now. But um, I hmm. use that, and I I believe creating a character for your cat and then um, crit, the Critical Role video were, were both. Uh, made using that program and then I switched back recently because you can in when you use like I like Fire Alpaca as a drawing program but with Adobe Flash like something about it just doesn't give you as much like drawing options and something yeah yeah yeah, it can be tough with that one yeah and so it's like I've, I've kind of been switching between the two and um 
the, the recently I'm doing I draw things in in Fire Alpaca. Oh, plus I I also use another program, which is there's one called Moho Twelve, which is Adobe, which is Moho Twelve, which is um, Anime Studio. Yeah, I think anyway, it's called Moho Twelve Pro, and what it does is that it sucks. It's terrible as a drawing program. It has a lot of problems, mm-hmm. but one of the big advantages is the fact that you can kind of group the layers and you can do certain effects to them. And then in addition, it has an automatic lip sync function. So if you ever see there's like, there'll be long sections where my characters are talking to each other. I'm using Moho 12 there. And what I do is I will draw these images into in Fire Alpaca and save them. And then I will import them into Moho and then I'll do the lip syncing there. So anyway, my the, my uh, format is very weird and strange, and I've been changing it a lot over the years, trying to figure out what I can get away with. It's like Frankenstein. Oh yeah, it's a weird <laughs> Frankenstein uh, thing. <laughs> hey, they come they come out good though. So. Mm. I don't know. I still right? go. They're nowhere near professional quality. Like they, st- I still have a long way to go if I want to be doing like professional work. <laughs> the artist journey. Yeah. Okay, so next question is by Brett Hook, and his question is, what's the story behind your handle? Your adoring fans deserve to know. All right, uh, so <laughs> there, the, the question assumes that there's a story behind there. Um, <laughs> so <laughs> the, I, I guess there is, but it was, um, what had happened is that I was like, I think this was a while back, I was starting up a blog and I was going to be writing, and I was like, oh, crap, what do I want to do for the name? And I was like, uh. And I, so for God knows what reason, I was in this phase of, like, I want to be weird. I want to use nouns. And I was like, <laughs> what if I went onto a random noun generator and got, a, got two nouns from there and just made it my name? I'm like, that sounds cool. This was, like, so six, this was, like, eight years ago. Um <laughs> So anyway, I actually know this was in like high school or something. This was before I had the YouTube channel. Um, and so I went onto the random noun generator. I'm like, okay, I'm just going to roll up two random nouns and the two random nouns, whatever I get, that's what the universe has given me to be my name. And so, oh God, so much power. <laughs> so I'm like, I'm just going to go with it. And I hit random nouns and I wanted two, and it gave me lobster forest. <laughs> and I was like, okay. Wait, 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 wait. So you're telling me your channel could have been called Lobster yes. Forest. Okay, look. Um <laughs> I've made some bad decisions. <laughs> I need that. We I do not need no. it to be Lobster Forest. We do not <laughs> No, just no. Like, okay. <laughs> like, I was even toying around with it for a while. I was like, maybe, and I imagined, like, the artwork would be, like, these trees, and you have these lobsters on them. <laughs> and, like, and I was like, I'm thinking about it. I'm like, okay, you know what? I'll, I'll, I'll get a second one, and I'll just, like, compare, and if the second one's better... Like, we'll just compare. So I just did random noun, random noun, random noun. I just kept going until I got a bunch of nouns. And then Mm -hmm. for God knows what reason, I said, like, puffin for, like, I I said, like, blue something, um, daisy something, spade something. I forget. It was, like, a list of these names. And then for God knows what reason, I was like, puffin forest. There we go. And at the time, I didn't know it was going to stick around for such a long time. I'm just like, okay, I'll put puffin forest down. And it was something I just didn't even think about. And, Mm -hmm. um... Yeah, that's that's why I was there. There was also a little bit of um, there. There's so there's a, some advantages and there's some disadvantages to it. The advantages is that it's easier for people to remember because since they're nouns, like something about it is more memorable, and there's like mm-hmm. you get a visual off of it, um, and it's easier to like recommend to people. Whereas you say it's like, oh, I'm uh, lightning uh, flowers twelve three, six, you know, or something like a string of numbers or something. But the, the, yeah. in the olden days, that's they used to have the numbers and everything. But anyway, so having a noun was, was kind of nice. But it's like, it's such a nonsense name. But it was, at the time, I didn't even know what my channel was going to be. So I'm like, okay, I'll just give it a nonsense name. That way it doesn't have any baggage with it. It's like, it's a term that just doesn't mean anything. Um, but another thing is there was also another issue because there's two ways to spell forest. 
Now, <laughs> there's way one is that you can spell it like a name, which is you have two R's in it. Like, um, like if you use it as a last name or a first name, you say forest with two R's. Or yeah. you can spell forest like a literal forest with just one R. And okay. so I'm like, oh, I'll spell it with two R's like the name. That'll totally not be confusing. <laughs> so so what, what happened is that, of course, every a lot of people, whenever they'd come to my channel, they'd, they'd see forest. And they'd mentally think it was spelled with one R because, once again, that's how, that's how people normally spell forest. And plus, yeah. I would even talk to people. I'm like, oh, it's forest like the name. And they're like, what? I'm like... You, you use two R's, and when you spell it like the name, they're like, really? And I'm like, I thought this was common knowledge, no? And, you know, but, but anyway, so for the longest time, I was using two R's, and I was like, God, you know, I don't want to, like, should I spell it this way or that way? And, like, mm -hmm. maybe I should change, maybe I shouldn't, and um, maybe I should just switch to doing an R. Like, everyone's going to give me crap about it. And um, what the big thing was I did actually in the past, like I think it was like two months ago or a month ago, I did actually change the um, the, the channel art and I changed the name so that way it's just one R um, in my name. Mm. And it was, it was a big change for me. But the big thing which did it, which caused me to change it, was because um, I YouTube was giving me statistics of how people are searching for my channel. And everyone was right. typing Puff and Forest with one R. Everyone. Like uh -huh. no one was typing it with two Rs. <laughs> and then the other yeah. issue is that um, I went onto a chat and some people were like asking me questions and they were trying to talk to me and all of them were writing my name with one R, not two. And so here I am, mm. I'm thinking that, oh, I've trained my fans, everyone's using two R's in my name and no one was, you know? So it's like, I had this small group of my fans that were using uh, the two R's and then the bulk of my fans that were using one R and then it's also more convenient for people, new fans coming in, because if you spell it like the little literal forest, they already know how to spell that. So this was a huge debate for me. But eventually there was one <laughs> day where I quietly took down all the art and put up new stuff where I just omitted one of the R's. And I couldn't do yeah. it with the old videos, but I just I changed it out. And no mm. one messaged me about it. Because I thought I thought I was going to get people like writing into me because whenever I've pulled down a video, like I immediately get flooded with messages like, where did you where did this video go? I thought there was supposed to be, a video. Yeah. you know, if I change something, everyone messages me. And so I thought that when I changed my name or I, I dropped the R, like I thought everyone was going to be messaging me, but no one did. Right. It was like two, three weeks down the line. Like, I think someone someone messaged me like, hey, there was something about an R like. And so it was like one or two messages, I think. But it was it was funny. Yeah. So that's the story. Sorry, yeah. oh. if, sorry, everyone well, for being confusing about that. Well, now you know you're going to get a barrage of messages. <laughs> what do you mean you got rid of the other R? Oh, yeah. Now now I'm going to have a whole fandom around the second R in my name. If, yeah. if anyone wants yeah, to, or, or like, if anyone's going to be a stickler, <laughs> both ways of writing it are correct. You can write it either yeah. way, and that's fine. You know, you're going to have fans who are like, I was here before you got rid of the second R. I mean, it's like I got rid of it like two, three months ago. So it's I mean, it's kind of there's a good possibility that someone was probably there before. then. Yeah, <laughs> no, but true. in the future, it's going to be a stickling point. <laughs> right, right. OK, well, I think this ties into this question really nicely by Multivix, which is uh, what was the reason for your design choice for your video avatar? Mm. Uh, what was my design choice for my avatar? Um, so what had happened is one of the the earlier videos that I had made, um, and the video is not currently up there, but it was like talking about my brother and myself playing RPGs, and we had played in the Star, Star Wars RPG. So that was the first time I had to talk about myself, which meant I had to draw myself, and so I had to think of a way of mm -hmm. drawing myself. And what was, what was interesting was... I first, I didn't even first start with me. I started with my brother. And there's, as an artist, like there was a particular like template or there's like a way of drawing a character. Like this is normal. Like, however, like this size body and this size head is what I consider standard. And anything larger than that is considered overweight or fat or um, bulky. And then anything smaller than this is considered short or thin or whatever. And so I had this mm -hmm. particular size that I would use. And my brother... Um, for my brother, I made him taller. He's an older brother. So I made him taller and then I gave him square shoulders. So I made him, um, I made him more like pointed, 
or um like, i don't know how to say it like um i guess like masculine or something or yeah like, i guess i guess I like i i mean it, honestly I, I was at the point where the, even the term like my art was so low grade i don't even know if i'd use the term masculine but it's like you know how sometimes you'll have these cartoon characters where oh this one's rounded this one's sharpness like this this one has sharp right, features right. and so i was trying to give my brother a, a sense of like sharpness and he's tall and uh and by, by sharpness i mean like literal sharpness as in like like his shoulders are sharp and stuff like that and then um i decided okay how am i going to do my character my character would be the opposite where my character would be his was a head taller than the normal mine would be a head shorter than the normal and then in addition, mm. whereas his character was designed to be sharp, mine would be designed to be round. And so that's why I had rounded shoulders, rounded head, rounded this. Um, and it wasn't, I mean, and so I designed the character that way. But the problem is once you make, once you commit to a character being looking a certain way, like that's the yeah. way you look. Like if you, if you design the character to look very much different, it's like, hey, that's not what you, you know, like something about like, oh, I drawn it this way. And then I, I'm like, oh, okay, I'll just keep this for like subsequent videos. And then since then I had made small like changes to this and any of the features that I liked kept getting, going to the new one, new character. And then any of the features that I didn't like would just get dropped. And so uh, something about the hair for God knows what reason is stuck around, even though I don't do hair that same way. Like something about <laughs> the way I do the shoulders is like just stuck around. And then um, I'm trying to think what else with the character. It's like um, also. It's, well, you it's, recently added a nose and ears oh, yeah. to your last yeah, video. Yeah, that's that was I, I've been changing. Yeah, I've been trying to experiment with like changing the character around like, oh, I'll, I'll try doing an ear and nose and stuff like that. And um mm -hmm. And I'm even exper the the weird thing also with the character in this new animation is that I've been experimenting and something about the fact that it's like I look up online for different reference images like oh how do artists do this kind of a an overweight character but looks like this or is in this kind of pose and like all the characters I can find their normal size or their normal weight mm. and so it's like it's very weird to get it as a reference and plus um, normally my character has like like um, is. Uh, very pudgy and so it's kind of like he has round shoulders but if i do that in a new art style it makes him look broad and bulky and it's like oh i don't want oh, it to okay. it's it's like it's very weird because when i change the art style i have to change how i represent my features you know and stuff like that or if it's like if i try to draw him as overweight um it's like it it's it it doesn't it may not impact the upper torso or it's it's below the um the chest so it's it's very weird it's it's new challenges i have to think about in in how i draw my character uh going forward yeah art is tough man <laughs> yeah but with my brother's character um he only lasted he was only in like one video but then how i represented my character like just stuck around and um yeah. there's also another thing is that um there's a joke i don't know if many people like get this joke or is it just an inside joke is that um, whenever I draw my character, like in in character, as in he's a PC, it's always just me. But I've changed the clothes out, and the joke I was trying to go for that was that my character, I'm always just cosplaying as a hero, or cosplaying as Gandalf, but everyone else <laughs> is the hero. You know, they are those characters. Whereas my guy, my my, I'm just pretending to be the hero, but everyone else is the <laughs> actual heroes of the story. <laughs> <laughs> You're a stand in. Yeah. <laughs> okay, cool. Uh next question by Hello Leo. Uh how long does it take for you to make a video and do you ever stress out about putting up content? Um how long? Um it really depends. I think a uh four and a half minute to five minute video. Um, that could be just a solid work day as in, or a solid work week as in it's like the first and second days I'm doing the scripting and doing the recording and then five days of animating, um, maybe going into six or seven. So it's like week, week and a half. Um, when you're talking about an eight minute video, you're talking more around the lines of like week and a half to two weeks, something like that. Um, and, uh, it also depends like, am I really pushing the style this time or am I trying uh, like sometimes I'll get a new program and be playing around with it for like five days. And so mm -hmm. it's like, you got to factor that time in, but it's roughly, it's like 
making a video it's like a week and a half i'll say um i was actually was funny was the past like two months i was in a lot of rpgs and i was running i was in like four sessions a week or something or three sessions a week and that was killing my schedule i mean that was taking it i mean i loved it i i was having a blast playing in all those games but it was just that problem of you when you're part of an rpg it like pushes the schedule a day and then you add another one, it pushes it a day and you can get this double bump where you push a video and then it pushes into the next week and then it gets pushed again. So it's like, Oh my God, like that was just killing. Like it really slows down the time. Yeah. So, Jeez. Yeah. so it's like, I'm trying to, I'm trying to balance the schedule a little bit better so I can actually put out more than one video a month or two, maybe hopefully three. Mm hmm. God. Oh, oh, there was another question which I actually skipped over, or it was part of that word. Do you ever stress out about putting up content? Um, yeah. When I'm making the video, it's not stressful. Um, the stressful period is like that last day where you're like going through it and it's like, is it yes or no? And it's like, you just want to kick the thing out the freaking door and you're like, yep. there's something I'm going to miss, but I haven't found it yet. But the second I put it up, I know I'm going to figure out what it is. Like, I don't know what it is. Yeah, you is. get paranoid. <laughs> I don't know what it is. There's something broken. And the second it goes out that door, I'm going to figure out what it is. <laughs> and it's the, the most stressful part is when you're like, it's actually like waiting for it to uploading and putting in the title and everything and putting in the description where you're just sitting there. Yeah. And then there's that like calm before the storm where you hit publish, where you're just like waiting just like okay all right just waiting for those down votes to come in they're coming, they're coming. yeah what's gonna bite me in the Everything, butt thing like there's gonna be some problem and i'm gonna get hate mail i don't know what it is yet and it's i mean obviously most of the time it's fine but it's like it's always that paranoia of uh like on the day that you're releasing it, it like it's very stressful that day but the rest of the week it's it's mostly fine Okay, uh, next question. Uh, Creeping Doom asks, what is the craziest RPG setting you've played in slash ran? Um, craziest RPG setting? Um, so for me, I'm trying to think of, of the craziest stuff. Um, I'm going to list off like two or three, um, and then you guys can debate which one you think is the craziest. But I think Deadlands is just really batshit, where... It's like it's a setting of the weird West where it's like an alternate history of the West where um, it's it was like the demons started pouring out and um, it, it like you have the original history of the West and then there's mm -hmm. a, there's an alternate history where the weird West takes place where it was like um, the Native Americans were making a deal with these spirits from the beyond and then when we came in and started murdering them, they open the floodgates and suddenly you have these reckoners, these like demons coming in, making packs with people, giving people powers. You have like Kung Fu magic, you have steampunk technology and the Confederacy starts like winning the war. And so you have the Confederacy and the union, like just battling it out through the West. Like it's a, it's a really weird setting. Like I remember flipping over the back of the deadlands and it's like, you have these like Cybermen you know, these steampunk android things fighting and a kung fu guy like going, yeah, and like punching its uh, like its engine out from its chest or something. It's just it's crazy. Um, That's pretty wicked. Yeah. Then there was another setting which I ran in where I ran. It was a homebrew where I was running in like a Final Fantasy setting. Um, mm -hmm. And that one was pretty insane because you had like Moogles running around. You had like. Um, a lot of like these rat folk or these rat kin. You had like um, these groundlings, tunnelers, like armadillo kind of people. You had like a lot of really weird stuff. And this was a high magic setting because uh, I was running a superhero game. So it was like you'd have like just these mages running around that could like blast through you know the side of the wall or something like that. It was a super high powered magic setting. It was it was kind of in this like uh, JRPG um, uh, fantasy kind of a setting. Um, Cool. Yeah. So I, I think those are those are the two craziest ones that I've I've run. Cool. Cool. Uh, all right. Well, last question by Brian Gills. Do you think D and D Adventures League is helpful in bringing players together, or is it just kind of bleh? Okay. So funny thing here is I actually agree 
with both of those statements that it's like it's great <laughs> bringing players together okay. and it's also kind of blah it's it, adventures league is always one of the weirdest things to talk about because part of me knows that most of my people kind of don't really want to play or they don't it's so with adventures league the way it works once again and uh i've talked about it in this videos is it's adventures leagues is are the publicly run dungeons and dragons games where you can go in you can sign up and you can get a character and be playing and you can make your own character but the problem is that the reason why a lot of people don't want to play one you're playing with strangers like there's you're sitting down with like yeah. with a bunch of weird people you don't know their characters and then plus the the gm has a module that they're running where it's like okay we're going to do this we're going to do this we're going to do this and um the players have some choices to make and they can uh, do some stuff, but it's like you're not going to get those crazy stories where it's like I warp to another dimension and then warp back, you know, or something. You're not going to, you can't like impact the meta plot. You can impact the micro plot, like the the in between the session, but it's like as a GM, you start in a particular place and the session will be resolving some conflict. And so you start at the beginning and the plot line has to be about resolving whatever this conflict is and then you end at this point. So it's it's very rigid. And I right. could definitely see for most of my audience to be like, wow, that sounds really dumb. I don't want to play in that. <laughs> and I totally, 100% agree. Like, I can totally understand that position. Um, the thing is that for me, I still kind of enjoy it because you can have some craziness that occurs, but it's like, once again, it's not the big stuff. It's like, what did you just do? You know, you can have some crazy stuff, but... The problem also is that with the GMs who run it, like they're very rigid about like, oh, actually, this is the way you're supposed to solve this problem. Sometimes you can have that issue. And plus, once again, you're not mm -hmm. playing with your friends. You're playing with a bunch of strangers. But for me, as a GM, there's a bunch of wonderful things that I love about it. Like for, for one factor, um, you're with a group of like 60 people. Uh, you can get together, have a table, you know, it's like everyone there wants to play D&D, &D, so that's great. It, you don't have to be this thing where you, as a GM, you like call up people like, hey, can you can you play on Monday? Okay, cool. Yeah, hangs up yeah. the phone. Hi, can, can you play on Monday? No, you can't. What about Tuesday? Okay, and then hangs up and then call, you know, you don't have to do that like corralling. And so as a GM, it's great because um, I just have to open my table, people come in, and we can just play and then plus because you have those like standards like okay your character has to be between these like these guidelines i can just open it up anyone can come in but once again there are the guidelines it's very rigid um and then another advantage of it is the fact that as a player you can just pop in play for one session and then show up like five months later and just pop in again and um the the fact that it has that drop in drop out or the fact that it's like I as a GM cannot show up and someone else will run it for me if I'm not there. Or the idea that it's not right. hinged on me as a player showing up. And if I don't show up, like I'm going to get a bunch of complaints from people. It's just whoever's there, we play. If you're not there, you don't play kind of a thing. So that's really nice. But once again, on the flip side, the, the big, big, big downside is once again, you can't really have a huge impact on the plot. And... Like, a lot of people are like, I don't want to play in that. That sounds really dumb. Why would I play in a D&D &D game if I can't, like, have a huge impact on the plot? And I totally, totally understand that. I, that <laughs> makes perfect sense to me. But I, I just love meeting new people and talking to them about RPGs and the fact that you can get different groups together. And, like, people are moving back and forth. And that's, that's kind of cool. But, but once again huge 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 problem so it's it's one of those things where most of my people if you have a home group and uh, with a bunch of friends and you're having a blast i don't know why you would play an adventures league like i mean it's but <laughs> yeah. i will say like when you go to adventures league it's mostly veterans who they have a home group they just want to get another group together or meet with people or talk to them but a lot of times people come into the adventures league they talk with people about D D, and then they set up a new group and i almost kind of view adventures league as that's its primary goal is just to set up home groups <laughs> you know yeah i mean like a bunch of people in a room that all love D, &D sounds pretty great to me yeah. so yeah. <laughs> but it's uh, cool. the on the flip side also another problem is that sometimes you get people in adventures league who they got kicked out of other groups that they were in and they don't have anywhere else to mm -hmm. go so they end up here so sometimes you can be playing with people that are just 
just really bad. <laughs> just like they're just picking fights <laughs> with people and they don't get along with others or they're kind of flakes and stuff Aww. like that. And if you're a flake, if you don't show up or come back later, it's like, that's fine. But in home groups, like some people will get really pissed off. Like, why are we saving you a seat when you don't even show up on time? You know, and stuff like that. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Okay, well, cool. Um, well, I guess I can ask a question, right? Yep, yep, yep. Okay. Um, well, I mean, what is, what's the coolest thing about being a YouTuber, like doing this? Oh my God. Uh, so I kind of pick one. <laughs> um, I think, I think there's something really nice about, uh, being able to like do what you love, just put out the content and get feedback from people and, um, being able to practice at, at doing stuff you love. Like, Hey, I really like drawing and doing cartoons and, and making funny videos and being able to do that on a regular basis is really nice. Um, yeah. and also just the flexibility the fact that it's like YouTube doesn't call me up and say like, Oh, you have to release a video this week. You can just kind of like, you know, that like flexibility. And plus it's, um, being able to provide for like content for the community, for the RPG community. Um, and just yeah. the fact that you can put it out and you don't have to charge people for it. You can just put it out and it's free and anyone can look at it. And um, it's like, um, I'll be running a game and then sometimes people will recognize me. They'll recognize my voice from the videos. I'm like, oh, hey, that's awesome. And that's really cool. Yeah, no, that's that's really wicked. Yeah, I, I think like just that you get to really tap into talking to people who who love the same stuff as you is really cool. Oh, yeah, yeah. You know, you get to reach out and talk to people. So, I mean, like, we got to talk to each yeah, other. Yeah, that's awesome. that was yeah, cool. It's, uh, <laughs> it's really, because that's the other thing is it's like once you stand up and you're like, hey, I'm making the content. This is related to this particular topic. You can, like, talk to people and other, um, in in the industry or other artists and stuff like that. Because, once again, it's like, I don't know anyone else who's an artist. Uh, like, when I was first getting into art, like, people were talking to me and it's like, good luck with that because <laughs> I, I didn't even go into like art school or anything so it's like um i i think maybe in high school i knew people who who did art but um but that was that was before i i had gotten in, in into it myself so uh mm-hmm. i didn't want to talk to them about it <laughs> yeah right well cool mm-hmm. um I guess that's it. That was a fun Q and A. Yeah, that's that's it. Uh, it. Thank you, everyone, for coming. This was the Pub and Forest Q and A, Um, and uh, I've got a video coming out soon, hopefully. Uh, And then also, I have that Disaster Squad, the podcast I'm working on. So hopefully, that's going to be coming out or has already come out. Depends when I release this Q and A. And uh, thank you also for Dingo for coming here and asking the great (laughs) questions. Yeah, it was really fun. I really enjoyed it. And um, if you guys want to co- go and check out my channel, it's uh, Dingo Doodles. And I only got uh, maybe three, maybe four videos out by the time this comes out. So, uh, yeah, not not as much content as Puffin Forest, but uh, I hope you guys enjoy it. And if not, you can always go check out my comic, which is electricbunnycomics.com. Uh, which is there's like 200 something comics so uh yeah it was it was really great to be on your channel uh, thanks also i am going to put a link for her channel in the description of this video so you can check that out uh, uh when you're done and uh anyway i believe that's it also thank you everyone for who submitted the questions uh on my twitter and uh i'll see you guys uh next time <laughs>